So about two years ago, it was in lockdown, one of the lockdowns. So I guess it was a couple of years ago. I experienced burnout for the first time. So I'd had a fairly stressful career for almost 30 years already. Stress was not unusual for me and I have various points at which I can recognize when I'm getting overly stressed and things and that's things like self-care goes out the window, exercise, making time for exercise, sleep, staying up too late, just not being able to switch off. But burnout was different. So when I experienced burnout, it was at the point of which, at which we had our first full year as Project F. So as a founder of Project F, my first real foray into entrepreneurship. So I had, I've done a number of startups. I've been involved in a number of startups over the years and found it all very exciting and pretty cool. But having the risk so close to home was different. And that first year, full year, was when COVID hit. So it was really tricky. I think a year before would have been quite different. And at this point, I was start. I had. I questioned, am I? Should I be doing this? Am, am I causing a risk to my family in doing this? It collided with a number of different things at the same time. Where COVID, this point of time in time where lockdown happened, and it wasn't one where they said there's going to be two weeks and then we'll be out. And I think I was already fatigued with it. There, it was an. There was no end in sight. And all the planning that I tried to do over the first part of the year that had been shut down systematically because of COVID, again, was I, I just couldn't see an end to it. And it was probably about October, November time, I think. And I lost the ability to, what's the word? I lost the ability to cope. My coping ne mechanisms disappeared. And that was when I knew something was wrong. So typically, I'm quite a strong person and I cope very well. I moved here years ago with my eight-year-old son on my own. I'd had a marriage go down the pan when my son was not even two. I'd moved house, I'd got, I'd worked. My parents lived abroad from the time I was 18. I was used to coping. I was used to being alone. I had no family in the UK. I was a single parent for, what, seven years or something like that, six, seven years, and working and with a mortgage and all the things that you do and cope with as a single parent. And I'd worked four days a week and still maintained everything. And this was different. So when this happened, I noticed it through small things that I couldn't cope with. And the only thing that it was likened to was postnatal depression, which I had a, a small foray with when my son was born, just after my son was born. And that was when I remember I couldn't cope with small things. And this was like that. I suddenly found small, tiny little things that happen day to day that are just part of getting through your average day. I couldn't cope with them. I remember going into a shop to buy something and they said, oh, there's a surcharge for using a card under $10 or something like that. And that was a tiny thing. I, I left the shop. I came home and said, Rasmus, I need you to go back and buy that thing because I couldn't complete it. Anyway, so that was what happened. And I started to think, this is, is this the wrong time to do this thing that I'm doing, which is a really hard problem I'm trying to solve, which is why there's not other companies trying to do it. The other companies that are trying to do what or purport to do what we're doing, Project F, is, are companies that are just doing branding. So it's not solving the problem, but I came to realize, and I'd had some conversations with VCs that year who were saying, is there a reason why no one else is doing this? And it, at the time I was like, oh, it's like a, hmm, maybe you might be right. So I went off and, and looked, and actually they are right. It is a problem that is, I don't think it's insurmountable, but I think it takes, it takes somebody to, or a business model that has a number of different components to it, which am I the right person to do that? I hope so. I'm five years in and we're definitely making a difference, but there's no question. It's really fucking hard. Anyway, that aside, what did I do when I started to experience burnout? I took myself out of the situation. My husband was brilliant. James, he was very supportive and kept the dogs fed and, and 
alive and, and the family alive and looked out for me and completely supported me. I took myself off on a little road trip. So I got away and literally spent a few days driving up, which I love driving. It's just something that I love to do. I drank, I read, I watched Trash Telly. I took myself away until I felt in a position to resume. So it was literally just a few days, but I had to remove myself from the situation. I couldn't just down tours. And once I was away from the situation, that's where I got perspective. And I think that's been the case throughout my life. If you think about the time that you may have traveled overseas, which most people at some point have done this, I think. I did it when I was 21. I traveled Australia and India, and it gave me the best perspective on life I could possibly have. And it was like looking outside at someone else's life. And that's what I did when I was on my road trip. I looked back into my life as though I was trying to solve a problem for a friend. And that perspective gives you a very different view to the one when you're sitting in it down today. So that's what got me out of it. I came back and changed a few things and we got through it, but it was a pretty dark time. So burnout was one, but every single time I get those situations where I feel the pain of rejection by a client or somebody in a position of power who doesn't care, who genuinely, you can tell, they don't see that there's a problem and they don't care or they don't care or there's not enough care or they just, they're, crit they're critical of what we're doing and think they know better. I think every time that happens, and it happens quite a bit, you have to be okay with that. But every time it happens, I think, I can I really do this? <laughs> like, really, can I do this? Can I put my, my thumbs under the screws and my head in a vice every time this happens? But I have to, I feel a bit of a personal responsibility.